before it happened, most of us thought about fossil fuels only when we filled up our cars. Then the whole extraction industry collapsed, and we realized that something more important than transportation was completely dependent on these fuels. And that was the food system. We never thought about the fact that from growing and harvesting to processing and transportation, our food was made using fossil fuels. This is the story of a family trying to cope with the loss of those fuels. We have to grow, harvest, and forage for ourselves in a new world. It's called Food Mageddon. Our top story tonight, gas prices soar as oil producers declare a halt in production, citing an undisclosed complication. From OPEC and Russia to the United States and Canada, oil companies have turned off the taps, at least temporarily. As soon as I saw the news, I knew I had to start getting to work. I'm kind of lucky that my job has made me think about fossil fuels, society, and collapse. Um, I used to be an archaeologist, and I wrote about the rise and fall of ancient complex societies like the Aztecs, the Romans, Mayas, Incas. Um, and this all made me realize how dependent our way of life is on fossil fuels. Just like the Romans needed fresh conquest to keep their empire going, and the Maya depended on the monsoon rainfall, uh, we need petroleum, coal, and natural gas to drive everything in our world. Um, according to the news, the entire extractive industry has suffered some sort of crippling collapse, and we're stuck with just the fuel we have on hand already extracted. Um, they're falling it. They're, right now they're calling it gas again, but pretty soon it's going to become food mageddon. This is going to get really bad. It's winter now, but it's going to be spring soon, and then it'll be winter again. It's going to be trouble. We've got a whole bunch of chickens. I don't know how I'm going to feed them. I don't grow food for chickens. I, I, I don't even know where to start growing and getting food ready for them. What are we going to do? We need them for meat and for eggs. Plus they're nice to have around, but what are we going to do if we can't just pick up feed at the store? Hey. I mean, people had chickens before we had fossil fuels, so we should be able to have chickens afterwards. I, <laughs> I just never done it, so we have to figure that out on top of everything else. At least we've got a rooster. We should be able to grow chicks this spring. Probably not a bad idea. Increase our flock since we're gonna have to depend on it. Plus, the chicks are really cute. So right now, what do we know? Uh, the news says that there's been a major catastrophe in the extractive industry. It's rather vague. I, I, I don't know the details. They don't provide a lot of details. They just say that uh, for right now, um, fuel production and other fossil fuels are kind of shut down uh, until further notice, which is kind of ominous sounding. Uh, you know, we have the strategic petroleum preserve. Um, I don't know if they're going to tap into that, how long it's going to last. I, I, I don't know at this point. Right now, um, it is the very beginning of February. At least, you know, system seems to still be functioning, at least in the interim. So, you know, right now we're kind of business as usual, uh, but we certainly are, are, are thinking ahead. What, what are we going to do um, next and what's going to have to change? About 80 to 90% of our energy comes from fossil fuels, so we're going to have to really uh, change things around quickly, uh, even if it's just a shortage for a few months. We're really lucky now. We have the Postal Service. It'll bring us anything, anytime. We just have to order it online. It's easy. That's not going to happen after, well, I don't know, a couple of months. That's going to be not possible. Definitely gonna be a lot quieter around here, I won't mind that, but we're gonna have to plan ahead, buy what we need now, get it sent here, and 
hope that we thought of everything. It's the beginning of February right now, so we've still got snow here in southern Wisconsin. But we have to start thinking ahead right now. Uh, we're lucky in that we've been turning our yard into a garden for a few years, but we don't have that much space. Um, it's basically a suburban lot out in the country. Uh, next time, we'll go into a bit more detail about our greenhouse and our growing operations um, and our other infrastructure, but everything that we're going to eat is going to have to be grown here. And luckily, if we can do it here on a quarter acre, a lot of people in suburbia or other places could do it on a small amount of land. Okay, so the news is some sort of catastrophe that shut down fossil uh, gas production and fossil fuel industry in general is crashing. The industry isn't saying much about why. They're, okay. they're putting out things that announcements that there's something wrong with the supply chain and they're anticipating not putting out any fossil fuels for the foreseeable future. I think we should plan for the worst. What's your inclination or what do you think so far? I think that this is all a stunt to raise prices ridiculously <laughs> high and get subsidies from the government because, yeah, I'll just stop it there. <laughs> I, 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 I don't think it's true. I think it's all BS. What rating are we doing? On I have no idea. Yeah, I think it's just the, the oil industries colluding to, oh, that's interesting. Um, to raise prices, and there aren't going to be any antitrust violations coming down the pipeline because they're probably benefiting from it. So, like OPEC did in the 70s, where they made the gas shortage, it was artificial. Mm -hmm. Okay, so why don't you introduce yourself since it's the first? <laughs> Who are you? I'm Lauren. I am Scott's wonderful wife. And Emotional support animal. <laughs> <laughs> What's Casey then? Hi, Bubby Girl. Hi, Bubby Girl. Hi, Bubby Girl. I know it looks like a lot this year, but we have a wood fired greenhouse and on one hand that's great uh, we'll have greens all year round but on the other hand that means I gotta get a lot of wood together and you have to get the wood to together for next winter this winter so it can dry over the summer and it's work now with my truck I can drive out and get wood and bring it back and split it but next year it's gonna be a whole different ball game It looks like a lot of wood, and we can go through two cords right now. Cords four feet by four feet by eight feet. So I don't even know what it's gonna be like next year when we don't have fossil fuels to heat our home and also our greenhouse. Three, four cords, easy, and that's just to keep things from freezing. I worry that people aren't gonna take this seriously until it's too late. So I'm Scott Johnson. I work at the Low Technology Institute. Um, I'm actually the founder and director of the Low Technology Institute. And essentially, our nonprofit is here to develop strategies to house, clothe, and feed ourselves when fossil fuels are no longer available, which <laughs> happens to work out really well uh, with the recent news. Uh, so we have been asking ourselves for years, uh, what would happen if fossil fuels disappeared? That's the premise of the, the Institute. Uh, and we've been looking at this question and trying to figure out what, how could we survive when that happens. And a lot of the things that we've come up with and, 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 and have worked on are what you call low-tech solutions. And low-tech doesn't mean, you know, sticks and rocks, although we do use sticks and rocks. Uh, well, <laughs> it, it's the simplest means to achieve an end. And the example I always give of that is, you know, uh, a microwave meal looks like a really simple thing. You take it out of the freezer, you take the top off, you pop it in the microwave, you eat it. Uh, but that simplicity uh, belies what goes into that. All the energy to heat it, to refrigerate it, to process it, to grow it um, is quite a lot. There's a lot of production there. Um, and so, you know, something as simple looking as a, as a microwave meal is, is not simple at all. Um, it's a lot simpler believe it or not, energetically um, and through a whole bunch of other measures to grow food on your own property and eat it. 
Um, and so we've kind of been uh, working on this for years on a in a serious fashion, but n not in a you know dire emergency situation. But now, with the news that fossil fuels are disappearing, uh, we're going to have to put these things into practice. You know, in my mind, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of other people have done this. I've thought about like, well, what if what if there was a gas shortage, or what if you know fossil fuels somehow became unavailable? What, what would we do? And you know, you kind of think through these scenarios. Uh, but when it comes to food, without food, a lot of things quickly become less important. Um, a lot of revolutions in history have started because of food. Um, the French Revolution coincided with record high bread prices. You know how like there's a, a murder of crows and all these other kind of uh, silly um, mass nouns for things. I like to say that a uh, a large group of hungry people uh, is called a mob, right? Um, and without food, everything else, again, just becomes completely superfluous. So uh, for us, the number one priority isn't heating or water or anything like that, because we have those, at least we have the, the water taken care of, heating we can work out, um, but food, food's gonna be, food's gonna be the number one issue um, as fossil fuels become scarcer and scarcer. How long are, how long do you think we should plan for being oh. self-sufficient? I, I don't know if it's a matter of having to plan for self-sufficiency. I think it's a matter of, yes, you know, we're going to have to budget our gas intake, you know, for a few months, but then we're going to need to learn to just re-budget for a new normal again of whatever this, this heightened gas price is going to be. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't think this is the end of days, you know, I think this is... My hopes are dashed. <laughs> Do you want it to be the end of days? End of um, fossil fuel days. No, I mean, I don't think fossil fuels are going anywhere. Okay. I think people love their fossil fuels too much. And I, again, I think it's just a business tactic. Also depends on if this was a, a man-made issue mm -hmm. or if it was a natural naturally caused issue mm -hmm. but we don't know yet and so hopefully more information will come out which yeah. again is why i think it's all a stunt yeah. so we aren't the average people no but we've been here two years so people could pretty much catch up to us if they put their mind to it and, they put and their... follow lowtechinstitute.org on it yes blog. exactly <laughs> no but like you, you could mm -hmm. like we could catch up to ourselves in a year at this point, if we had gone, if we, if this happened like three or four years down the road, yeah, we would be so far down, so much farther on that we couldn't have made that up. But mm -hmm. like, I wouldn't have made it in the ground greenhouse. I would have made a less labor intensive greenhouse, you know, like, but you could, you could conceivably turn like Rin's backyard into this in a year. Easy. Rin doesn't have as much backyard as well. Yeah, but she has more, she has plenty of sunlight. Like, That's you know. They live in suburbia. They could turn their backyards into this much easier than we had to. We, did, we had to clear brush. We had to do all this stuff. We're okay for the first month. We can be generally relaxed about it. But then after, if it hasn't p fixed after one month, then the second month, we need to start being more careful. Okay. Third month, more careful. Fourth month, more careful. So if you're right, and it's just OPEC or whoever screwing with us, then great. If it's uh, and we haven't changed anything, we haven't changed anything, but all right, let's if, see how if, things are if, in a month. If fossil fuels are gone, then we'll be glad that we listened to me. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any immediate worries? Other I worry, how do I phrase this? <laughs> oh, you're not worried about the whole scenario about gas disappearing, you're worried about how I'm going to react to it. <laughs> <laughs> You're worried. I'm worried about some overreaction from Scott and needing to calm him down and come back to reality. Okay, well right now the reality is fossil fuels are not available. <laughs> or Yes, but by tomorrow morning everything will be fine. Alright, so how's this going to work? Every Friday, more or less, uh, there should be a new video up. So you should click the subscribe button. I'm sure there's somewhere down here somewhere. And then you'll be notified when a new episode's out. Uh, 
Every week we'll show you what we've been up to that week, what we've been growing, what we've been doing, what we've been preserving. Um, we'll share news uh, as it happens, um, as fossil fuels continue to uh, disappear from our way of life. Uh, what, what's, um, what's new uh, in the world and as best we can tell how's that going to affect us. We will talk about the new restrictions that we've had, you know, when we run out of gas and we can't drive to the grocery store. We will let you know all that. Um, in addition, uh, we're going to do a podcast, and that podcast will be a bit more behind the scenes talking about uh, the research we're doing, that we're basing all of this on, um, and we'll also be jotting this all down. Uh, that means uh, we'll be recording you know, how many hours we work, what kinds of food we're making, how much of each food we're growing, uh, what sorts of inputs we've put in, um, just the, the real nuts and bolts, the real energetic cost of all of this uh, food growing and also the production. And we'll also share some recipes because we're going to be eating a lot of potatoes, I can tell you that now, uh, and I'll talk about potatoes. I'll probably do a whole episode on potatoes. No joke. Uh, potatoes are totally worth it. So, uh, But we eat a lot of potatoes, and you need a lot of different potato recipes uh, in order not to get completely bored uh, eating just potatoes. So we will uh, have all this formal reporting on the website, so you can check that out under the Food Again um, tag or blog, uh, link. We also would really love to have your contributions, you know, send, uh, send comments or uh, get in contact with me at scott at lowtechinstitute.org. You can check out the whole thing at lowtechinstitute.org, that's our website. Um, if you are interested in volunteering uh, and you live in the southern Wisconsin area, get in touch. If you are with a business or organization that has to do with gardening or some ancillary uh, food preservation or uh, anti-fossil fuel, whatever, um, and you want to work with us, also get in touch. So tune in next week. I think what the best thing to do is to really introduce you to our, 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 our operation here. We'll show you the greenhouse and the solar panels, the... Uh, the, the garden beds, which are under snow right now, the chicken coop, we'll, meet, we'll see the bees. Um, we'll kind of maybe do a little bit of a tour around town uh, just to kind of give everybody a real context of, of, of where we're coming from, where we're, where we're living, and, and what we're trying to do. So uh, stay tuned for that. It should be out next Friday. Um, again, subscribe button. So um, I think that's all we have for this week. Hope you're doing okay, good luck, and uh, take care of yourselves. Mm -hmm.